Hey everyone, my name is Dave. Welcome to the NTD Racing Speed Shop. If you watched my video a couple weeks ago, Best Arc sent me a MIG welder. It was like $125 on Amazon. And I show you how I was able to MIG weld with it and also lay a stack of dimes TIG welding, which I thought was a pretty cool thing to do. And they liked my video. They sent me another thing here to review, which I think is awesome because this could not have come at a better time. It is a plasma cutter. It is the 50 amp high frequency pilot arc plasma cutter. It'll run off of 110 or 220. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open up the box and I'm gonna show you what's inside. We'll uh, put it together, we'll put it at work, see how it works and see if maybe this works inside your shop. The price sure is right. You can check that out in the link in the description below. Let's go ahead, open up, see what's inside. All right, we got the best arc plasma cutter out of the box. Let's see what they got in there. First off, the unit looks nice, kind of like the uh, the MIG welder did. The packaging was all good. It's not gonna get beaten up even if it's flipped upside down or in delivery or something like that. So the really good packaging for this thing. Uh, as far as setting it up, you got the first off the torch here. It appears to have about a 10 foot lead that goes into this thing. You got this other wire you wire in called the pilot. Uh, this is the control I'm thinking the on and off and you have a ground which I have grounded over here to uh, to my table the electrical connection is uh, I think they call it a NEMA 6-50 or something like that uh, it's a pretty standard connection I have it on all of my plasma cutters and I also have it all around my workshop as far as different places to plug in plasma cutters welders and my compressor all run off the same thing I think they're 50 amp connections uh, for those and then they also give you this one right here which will allow you to step it down and just plug it into a 110 or a 220 but you know when you're cutting and stuff like that you're gonna be able to cut stuff uh, you know up, they're saying up to 9 16 greater than a half inch if you're on the 220 but if you go down to a 110 you're down to about 3 8 of an inch I will tell you that is still pretty good I have actually looked for before plasma cutters on 110 and they're hard to find, especially ones that cut thick stuff. And uh, I'll be interested. Maybe I'll test that out also, how it does on the 110. They also give you uh, this air hose to use. And uh, I just plugged in my regular shop air, went straight in this, the same shop air I use for everything else in my shop. They give you some other consumables, which kind of match up, which go inside the uh, plasma cutter i'll have to look online to see if there are replacements that would be a factor because you know what you normally run through with these things is you run through the electrode and the nozzle or what they're calling the tip uh, usually this thing right here which is called the cup that, that lasts pretty long and then this guide i would expect that to last pretty long too but when you know you get water or something like that through your lines you're usually gonna blow up that electrode and that tip will be the first thing to go let's talk about water through the lines and what you'll need um, i run a pretty big compressor um, i run a dewalt i actually have a video on how i set up my dewalt and i also set up my harbor freight air dryer so what happens here comes out of my my uh dewalt it goes through a descant filter descant filter into my harbor freight uh, air dryer and then it actually goes through some copper lines i have a drain over there and then i also have another drain over here where all my plasma cutters you can kind of get the point is that dry air in plasma cutting is pretty much everything it'll keep your consumables lasting a long time i'm a lucky guy i have the uh langmuir systems crossfire xr i got a ton of videos on how i use that and then i'm also I've got a Bentec Dragon A250. This thing is amazing. Both these tables are, both these plasma cutters are really amazing, but I really needed a hand torch. And one of the reasons is because I usually get these things called skeletons all over your table and you wanna cut those things up and it'd be nice to have a hand torch. And just for other times where, you know, my plasma table just, you know, isn't convenient to cut stuff, it'll be nice to have this thing. So that being said, let's go ahead and put it to the test. I think I have a couple pieces of 3 16ths up here. I got some quarter, I might be able to find some eighth inch also to it to cut through and let's just see how this thing does. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. All 
All right, so this is really slick once I have this thing on. Something I've never had before is this thing has a regulator. I think it also has a filter inside the machine where you can regulate the air. And something else that's really cool is it tells you what PSI it is sending out to the torch. And basically with this knob right here, you can pull it out until it clicks. Actually, it's out right now, so it's in. You can pull out so it clicks. And then you turn this knob left or right to either dial up or dial down the air that you're sending to the, uh, the torch. You obviously have the amps that you're gonna send uh, to the torch. And then this other dial right here basically is your post flow of your air. How long the air is gonna flow after you release the trigger to basically cool the torch and that kind of thing. Let's go ahead and see. Let's start with a piece of 3 sixteenths and let's see how she cuts. So as you can see, I was having a couple problems having penetration with the settings that were in the book. And you know, I've been doing a lot of plasma cutting. What I generally like to do with my uh, plasma cutter, which is a Razor Well 45 down here, is I run it wide open. So I dialed this one up to 50. I also dialed the air pressure up a little bit more. I like to run a little higher air pressure. And I was able to get some pretty consistent cuts. Now, I, there's some rippling you can kind of see in the results of the cuts. And I think that it has a lot to do with maybe the speed at which I am cutting. So what I will do, like I said, I turn it all the way up and then I will basically adjust the rate at which I'm cutting. And then the other part of it is just that my hand just is not as steady as a machine torch. And so you kind of get some of that wobbly in there. Uh, it got better as I kind of went down to the diamond plate, the eighth inch diamond plate. I thought the results were actually coming out really, really nice. Um, but like I said, I want to test, test this thing out and see how it does on 110. So I got, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in to my sketchy outlet over there and run a extension cord over here. We're going to plug it in and now let's see if it'll cut the diamond plate on 110 as opposed to 220. All right, so when I plugged in the 210, 35 amps is all it would give me on the screen there. And as you saw, as I went to cut, the first cut was going a little bit too fast. You can always tell when your plasma cutter is not penetrating because sparks start flying everywhere as opposed to you know through the material. And then I was halfway through the second cut, which I thought was a really good cut. And, uh, and it was doing it all the way up until the point, <laughs> point where, where that thing blew and I tripped a breaker. But that being said, this will work on a generator, our basic generator, which our other best arc MIG and TIG welder will also work on that same generator when we're out in the field at the Baja 1000, those kinds of things. And we just need to cut metal quickly. This is awesome. I am super impressed with the best arc plasma cutter. 
All right, let me clean it up with some of the things you probably saw me using during the video. I used some number five uh, welding glasses. You don't want to use sunglasses. They're not going to do it. Um, and you'll find these a link for these in the description uh, below. I have a really cool extension cord for that NEMA connection there and that allows me to run machines further away from the wall that will also be in the description below as well as this machine and i will tell you that when i did a review for the best arc mig and tig welder i was completely blown away because with for 125 dollars i was able to tig weld and lay down a stack of dimes i thought that was amazing my expectations were higher for the plasma cutter and they totally reached my expectations I really do like this machine and we'll be using this and taking it with us when we go to races like the Baja 1000. This machine right now is selling for about $300 on Amazon. That is a killer deal. For reference, my Razor Weld is about $900 and my Hypertherm over there is well over $2,000. Granted, the Hypertherm is a much superior plasma cutter as far as being able to be computer controlled to be turned on and turned off. Got a machine torch, a really great machine. But to get yourself plasma cutting at a really great entry point, I find it hard to believe that you could beat something like this. Anyway, if you like this video, you're definitely gonna like the video where I tested the MIG and TIG welder. You can check that out right here. Other than that, I hope to see you next week. Take care of yourself.